Good morning. Welcome to Daily Prayer on Sunday the 6th of June. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. Thank you for joining me today as we worship God together and as we pray together at the beginning of this day. Please bow your heads with me now as we begin our time by remembering the Lord's presence with us. Psalm 49 Hear this, all you peoples, give ear, all inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak wisdom, the meditation of my heart shall be understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb, I will solve my riddle to the music of the harp. Why should I fear in times of trouble, when the iniquity of my persecutors surround me? those who trust in their wealth and the boast of the abundance of their riches. Truly, no ransom avails for one's life. There is no price one can give to God for it. For the ransom of life is costly and can never suffice, that one should live on forever and never see the grave. When we look at the wise, they die. Fool and dolt perish together and leave their wealth to others. Their graves are their homes forever, their dwelling places to all generations, though they named lands their own. Mortals cannot abide in their pomp, they are like the animals that perish. Such is the fate of the foolhardy, the end of those who are pleased with their lot. Like sheep they are appointed for shale, death shall be their shepherd, straight to the grave they descend, and their form shall waste away, Sheol shall be their home. But God will ransom my soul from the power of Sheol, for he will receive me. Do not be afraid when some become rich, when the wealth of their houses increases. For when they die, they will carry nothing away. Their wealth will not go down after them. Though in their lifetime they count themselves happy, for you are praised when you do well for yourself. They will go to the company of their ancestors, who will never again see the light. Mortals cannot abide in their pomp. They are like the animals that perish. Thanks be to God for his word. Let's pray together. God of mercy and truth, we seek your forgiveness for the sinful way we live our lives. We are unworthy to be your children, unfit to be your servants. We are burdened with memories of things undone that ought to have been done, and of things done that ought not to have been done. Bring us afresh the healing and cleansing power of your Spirit, that we may lay hold of the salvation you offer, and walk in newness of life to the glory and praise of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God forgive us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, give us time to amend our lives, and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We take a break today from our readings through Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, and we read from chapter 3 of the book of Genesis, beginning at the 8th verse. Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals, and among all wild creatures, upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, 
and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pangs in childbearing, in pain you shall bring forth children, yet your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to the man he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. Thanks be to God for his word. One of the most important and yet saddening things right at the beginning of the book of Genesis is the verse where Adam says to the Lord, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. You know, we are created for relationship with God. And the very fact that sin leads us to distance ourselves and hide from God is at the very root of the curse of the broken relationship we have with God. Whilst Adam blames the woman and the woman blames the serpent and God curses the serpent, it's so important to note that God never abandons the relationship with humankind. Though we may be disobedient, and though human beings may at times alienate themselves from one another, God never ceases to be in conversation with us. God always is reaching out to us in grace and in mercy. Even, you see, when sin removes us from close proximity with God, even when in Genesis, very soon, Adam and Eve are told to leave the Garden of Eden. God is ever in pursuit of relationship with us. This is the mercy and the miracle of grace. So for any of us who today feel that we have become alienated from God, please know that God loves you and desires relationship with you. Let's confess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray together now for ourselves, for our world, for those we know and love. Let's pray together. And today, let's pray for Christians in Iran. Pray for those who meet in house churches and for those who are frightened or scared because of their faith in Jesus and the potential that there is for persecution. We pray that Christians there may know the strength to persevere and will know the presence of the Lord with us at each and every moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the work of BMS World Mission and particularly for those who meet in the Principality of Wales in Senana Cymru, an organisation of Baptist women who meet to learn about, pray for and support BMS. We pray that those women would be encouraged and many more would be inspired by their faithful commitment to the Gospel. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for our families and our friends, wherever they may be this day, for those from whom we are separated by distance. We pray that we may not be separated in love or in fellowship. And we pray for the ability to continue to support one another, despite these circumstances in which we find ourselves as a nation at the moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you, with those whom you love and with God's people everywhere, today and forevermore. Amen. May God bless you today and keep you safe. Just a reminder that at 9.30 we have our kids' church and at 10.30 a service of worship where we'll be looking at Psalm 90 today. But until we meet again, goodbye and God bless you.